Pacific, so we should see it any second now. And there you are getting a great view of Crew-9 inside Dragon Freedom as it returns back to Earth. We are awaiting the drogue deploys. This view coming from the WB-57 high altitude plane. And there you see it on your screen, drogue deployment. Drogue descent rate model. You can hear the crowd cheer. Visual on two healthy drogues. The crowd here very excited as Dragon Freedom continues to make its way back to planet Earth. Next up, we'll stand by for the main deployment of the parachutes. The mains are quite a bit larger. You'll be able to notice the difference on your screen once they deploy, and they continue to ensure that the Dragon uh, spacecraft slows down even further. As we mentioned, Freedom will be traveling 16 miles per hour when it splashes down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida, here at 2.57 p.m. Pacific time this afternoon. And there we go. We have visual on four healthy mains. That view was from inside. Freedom copy. That view was from inside one of the buckets where the parachutes are located. So we see a great view there of the reefing on those parachutes. And as those parachutes, those main parachutes begin to inflate fully, four beautiful, healthy mains. Now awaiting visuals of splashdown. We'll start to hear Commander Nick Haig. Copy, 1000. As we heard right there, Commander Nick Haig will be calling out the altitude of the Dragon capsule from here on out. Landing in water is simpler and provides more margin against unlikely parachute issues. You can see those, uh, those parachutes continuing to slow the Dragon capsule down. And if you're just joining us, you're looking at 800 meters. A live view of Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Splash down two minutes from now at 2.57 p.m. Pacific. We do have four healthy mains really doing the job there. Just breathtaking views of a calm, glass-like ocean off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Crew 9 just minutes away from splashing down. This is really such an incredible shot. Uh, that Coffee, was... 600. That was a live view from our recovery vessel, uh, Megan, which is stationed a couple miles away from the splashdown site. We can see the crew there using their, uh, their restraints as resting places for their arms. They were just in space moments ago, <laughs> so their arms were able to float freely. 400 meters. This is a gorgeous bluebird day here that we have for the splashdown of Crew 9. It's incredible to think that the Dragon capsule just minutes ago was going over 17,000 17, miles per hour and now gently coasting to a soft splashdown. 200. Copy, 200 meters. Brace for splashdown. As you can see there on your screen, continuing to monitor progress of the Dragon spacecraft. And we're going to stand by for splashdown located in the Gulf of America um, off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Good main release. Copy splash down. We see main shoots cut. Nick, Alex, Butch, Sunny, on behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. It is, uh, it is an amazing thing. What a ride. I see a capsule full of grins ear to ear.
And as you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation of splashdown. Dragon Freedom has returned home and NASA astronauts. System safety verifications are in progress. We'll report back when recovery personnel are en route. Uh, understand and, uh, we're in section two of four decimal eight hundred uh, landing response and uh, looking for your words and if it's necessary. In the distance we can see the recovery vessel making its way. Copy, you're in section two for the environmental assessment in four dot eight hundred. That is not necessary today. Understand. So we will continue to have communications between the Corps and Nick Haig, the commander of Crew Dragon Freedom, which just splashed down two minutes ago off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Dragon Freedom has returned home with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. They're back on Earth after approximately 17 hours of a return journey from space. The SpaceX recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon Splashdown and they will now make their way to the Splashdown location. The teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away, so it's going to take them about 30 minutes or so to make their way and to... SpaceX Freedom, first server in Stable 1. Copy Stable 1, we see the same. going to take about 30 minutes for the recovery team to make their way over to Nick, Sonny, Butch, and Alexander, who are still seated and secured inside that Dragon spacecraft there on your screen. Incredible views there of that thermal protection system, or TPS. Um, that Dragon capsule was pristine white color uh, before it departed the station, and we can see how the reentry phase, um, you know, the thermal protection system did its job. Now, if you're wondering what that hole, that like bucket area is, that is uh, underneath the, the side hatch. That is where the main parachutes were stored. So when we saw the Dragon capsule docked at station, it looked very different. Um, that the, the, the panel that protects and covers the main parachutes, that was uh, still intact as well as the panels that enclose where the drogue parachutes are located. We can see those fast Freedom. boats. Freedom, SpaceX is go for recovery personnel to approach. Expect personnel alongside in the next few minutes. Freedom copies. We can see those fast boats. We weren't kidding when we said they were fast. While it does take about 30 minutes for the main recovery vessel to make its way over to the capsule, these fast boats uh, will be doing a couple of things simultaneously. A couple of them are going to be working to retrieve the parachutes that you see in the background there of this drone shot. Those parachutes will be retrieved from the ocean surface. We want to make sure we, uh, we are able to pull those out. The recovery vessel there closest to the spacecraft is going to be performing some safety checks. We can see there they're using an instrument that is basically working to detect if there are any hypergolic vapors or fumes that are still residing in uh, and or around the Draco thruster nozzles or, or outlets. Uh, the hypergolic fuel, which is necessary for on-orbit uh, on orbit burns to, con to maneuver the, the spacecraft, unfortunately those hypergolics are um, are, are unable to be breathed. They, they are toxic. And so this team here is doing those initial safety checks to make sure that it is safe for the rest of the recovery team to approach the spacecraft. They're also checking to make sure that any residuals from the, the pyros are, are safe and um, are not going to cause any issues. We can see the team working their way around the spacecraft to do these, um, event, basically these, these sniff tests on all of those Draco thrusters. And as we continue to await the recovery of our Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronauts Nick Haig, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov inside, Dragon has continuously, already rather, uh, autonomously completed several steps to safe itself following splashdown. 
We are continuing to see uh, Dragon in what is known as Stable One configuration. That's kind of the ideal uh, configuration following Splashdown. It's upright um, and the, the Dragon capsule is in the right configuration for it to be hoisted into the recovery vessel Megan, which you do see a little ways off in your screen approaching. Dragon will continue to remain live on air with you through that recovery process all the way through the point where uh, the crew is extracted from the Dragon spacecraft. Now, if you are just joining us, the mission has gone smoothly so far. Dragon successfully splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, 5.57 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. Approximately 17 hours prior to splashdown, Dragon autonomously undocked from the International Space Station, completed a series of departure burns, jettisoned its trunk section, and performed its final burn, the deorbit burn. This placed the Dragon spacecraft on a trajectory toward Tallahassee, Florida. Dragon successfully re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, followed by deployment of its parachutes to slow the spacecraft down to a gentle splashdown. We're now going to follow the... Freedom, hypergol sweeps and unfired ordnance checks are nominal. Rigging is in progress. Approximately 25 minutes until capsule lift. Stand by for PMC with SpaceX Flight Surgeon. And so what we did just hear there was communications that those hypergol checks uh, were complete. They didn't find any of that upon those checks, so we'll continue to move through the timeline. Next up is a process called rigging, uh, which you see happening right now on your screen. This is when a SpaceX recovery personnel actually works to um, climb aboard the capsule and work through procedures ahead of lifting um, onto the nest um, of the recovery vessel, Megan. We heard it's going to be about 25 minutes or so until that um, lift actually takes place. Okay, Freedom, the next call will be from the SpaceX flight surgeon on Dragon at Ground Private. Understand. Thank you. Call outs there indicating that the crew will have the opportunity to do a quick check-in with the SpaceX flight surgeon. This is standard procedure for every Dragon spacecraft uh, when it returns to the when it returns to Earth. Um, it's just an initial check-in, make sure everybody is doing okay. They will uh, also have another check-in with the with the flight surgeon once they are on board that recovery vessel uh, that you see there in the background. We can now see that SpaceX recovery in, uh, recovery team uh, member. Uh, they're on top of the Dragon spacecraft. They are going to be working to install plugs in the Draco thrusters to ensure that none of those, uh, um, and to ensure that no more uh, hypergolic fumes or vapors uh, come out from the spacecraft. They'll also place harnessing around the spacecraft that are required in order to lift it out of the water. As Go ahead, Sandra. Continuing to get some views of the recovery personnel, uh, both the main, the main recovery vessel, Megan, as well as some of those fast boats that we've discussed previously. It looks like just a beautiful day there out off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. Um, weather was pristine. We were able to get undocked from the International Space Station as expected at 10.05 p.m. Pacific time yesterday evening. And Crew Dragon has since completed um, steps ahead of its splashdown at 2.57 p.m. Pacific, and we're now stepping through procedures to get Dragon hoisted up onto the Megan recovery vessel and get the crew extracted out of the spacecraft. And you did see uh, some of the parachutes that were um, near the, the spacecraft. Upon detection of landing, Dragon automatically releases those main parachutes to prevent wind from pulling the spacecraft. Dragon then auto automatically safes any pyrotechnics that may still be present on the vehicle and may automatically perform additional minor system reconfigurations. The astronauts will remain seated and in their suits at this point, but the onboard air conditioning keeps things temperature controlled inside the spacecraft so the crew remains comfortable and the communication systems. Freedom, SpaceX, com check. SpaceX, this is Freedom. We have 
Copy that, Freedom. Have you loud and clear as well. And Dragon to Ground is no longer private. Understand. Thank you. As we saw there on the screen, we have a couple of fast boats uh, in the recovery fleet that have quickly moved into the splashdown location. They are being followed by one of the main recovery vessels, which will move into position upwind of the spacecraft. The two fast boats have very specific roles. <laughs> Excuse me. The first approach is focused on immediate safety inspection, as we saw. They do this um, for spacecraft integrity and checking for any presence of those hypergolic propellant vapors. And this ensures that it is safe for the recovery vessel to approach Dragon. Once Dragon is cleared for full approach, as we heard is the case today, the team begins rigging the spacecraft for water recovery by the recovery ship. The second fast boat is responsible for parachute recovery and also serves as a redundant boat to the first one that makes the initial approach to the Dragon spacecraft. As we saw um, a little bit earlier, we were also able to see one of the recovery team members get on a jet ski to help gather up the parachutes that were automatically detached from the Dragon, from the Dragon spacecraft upon splashdown. And it will take a little over 10 minutes for the recovery crew to complete their safety checks. Once they uh, complete the team, we'll begin preparing Dragon to be lifted. And as, as you uh, see, they, they are preparing for that to take place at this point. Um, as part of the preparation for this lift, one member of the recovery team has climbed on top of the spacecraft already so they can attach Dragon's hoist rings and connect to the lifting lines. It will take us less than an hour to raise Dragon to the recovery boat and remove the crew from the spacecraft. After medical checkouts, the crew will return to land within four hours by helicopter. And if no additional medical assistance is needed, the crew will board a waiting NASA plane and depart for Houston. And as we continue to await uh, uh, Dragon to be hoisted up onto the ship, we have a very special treat. NASA Public Affairs Officer Jaden Jennings, who is actually on the recovery vessel and had a bird's eye view of the splashdown today. Jaden, how are you? How was the view from the recovery vessel? Hi, Sandra. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear, Jaden. It's so great to hear you. 